Hey guys, Tom from Photoex here and today I'm going to talk to you about the exposure triangle. Now this is crucial in photography, this is what gives you your photographs, but it can be a little bit confusing about what we mean. Now I'm going to try my best to show you uh, the exposure triangle. As you can see I've got a few things set up and I'm going to go through a couple of things and show you um, how changing one of the exposure triangle's components alters the other one. Now you may remember from school if you were ever taught the fire triangle you need oxygen, fuel and heat to create a fire. Take any one of those away and the fire goes out and it's very similar theory to photography. You need shutter speed, aperture and ISO in order to create a photograph with the correct exposure. And I'm going to try and show you how altering one of those affects the other one and vice versa. Okay then, so I've got my Nikon D3300 set up looking at my fan that I've also got set up. If I just go into live view and show you the view that I've got set up there. And you may have seen my shutter speed video where I showed how changing the shutter speed and spinning this fan freezes this fan or makes it look blurry. So I'm going to briefly go through that again but I'm also going to show you how changing the aperture affects this uh, photograph that we're going to take. Now first of all let's go down to the very basics. When I talk about aperture I'm talking about the hole in the lens. This is what lets the light through and you can see on this lens there's a very tiny hole in the back. If I just try and adjust this for you, you can see that hole actually changes size. And the bigger that hole is, like this, that lets loads of light in and that ultimately gives you a faster shutter speed. Now you may have also seen my aperture video where I had a row of batteries all lined up and I took photographs at different apertures to show how the depth of field changes with different apertures. So we're going to briefly touch on that again as well. But this video is basically showing how changing this will affect how that turns out in your photograph and we're also going to talk about ISO as well which is a little bit harder to visually show you but I'll try my best to uh, tell you about it. So let's get into this then. Uh, if I come out of live view and I'll show you the settings that I've got on this camera at the moment. So I'm focused in on the fan. I've got shutter speed of 1 over 125th of a second. This is in aperture priority mode. I've got an aperture that I've set of f3.5 which is the widest that this lens goes. So that's letting in as much light as the lens physically can. And I've got an ISO set of 100. So if I spin my fan and then take a photograph. You'll see on the photograph the blades of the fan are kind of vaguely blurred, they're not really still and that's because of the shutter speed that we had of 1 125th of a second isn't a particularly fast shutter speed, it doesn't freeze action all that well. If we look again at the photo you'll see, you can see that battery is pretty clear, it's pretty in focus but it's not perfectly in focus. The fan is in focus but you can see my little diagram behind is quite out of focus and that's because I'm using a wide aperture of f3.5 so although it's letting in a lot of light it's actually giving me not very good depth of field. So if I wanted to get the battery in focus, the fan in focus and the picture at the back in focus so I'd have to change my aperture and I'd do that in aperture priority mode by rotating the thumb wheel Now I'd want an aperture of something like f8. Now you'd see as I was changing the aperture that the shutter speed was also changing to compensate and now we've got a shutter speed of 1 25th of a second. So now our shutter speed is even slower but my aperture is a lot narrower which is going to give us a lot more depth of field. So again if I just focus, spin my fan and take the picture you now see on the picture the fan is pretty much blurry all the way through, the battery is quite sharp and now although it's not perfect the little diagram in the back is a lot sharper than it was in the previous photograph. So changing my aperture is giving me more depth of field so I've got more in focus from the shot but at the same time in doing that I've actually slowed the shutter speed down enough to 
to blur out the fan. So by changing one, I've changed another. Let's do this one more time. I'm going to select an even higher aperture of, I'm going to go crazy and say F22. You'd never use an aperture like that. Uh, usually it's way too high, but I'm just going to do it to show you. You can see now that I've got a shutter speed of one third of a second. So we've got really slow shutter speed now. My ISO is the same because I haven't changed it. So again, I'm going to spin my fan and take a picture. And again, we've got a really blurry fan, even the writing, everything on the fans blurred out. You can see the battery really clearly and you can see the writing on the diagram really clearly. But that fan is even more blurry than it was before because the shutter speed has slowed right down. So we know that if we change our aperture to get more depth of field, our shutter speed is going to slow right down. So in turn, we get more movement in our image. So what happens when we want a lot of depth of field, but we don't want a really slow shutter speed? How can we get around that? If you want to freeze the motion as much as you can in something, but still get lots in focus. And this is where ISO comes in. Basically, ISO is what we used to call film speed. Back in the day of film cameras, you used to buy a film and it would develop at a certain rate. And this was called the film speed. And the more sensitive the film was, the higher film speed it had. This has crossed over into digital photography now. And although it's basically the same thing, we go about it in a different way. What we're actually doing is changing the sensitivity of the sensor. So the sensor actually gathers more light. It's a digital gain and it just makes us, the uh, sensor gather more light than it would normally. This has a downside. As with any, any sort of digital gain, you introduce electrical noise and static. And you'll see this in your photographs as quite a, a muddy, grainy look if you raise the ISO too high. So this is why we always try and keep the ISO as low as possible for as long as possible. But in certain circumstances, you need to raise the ISO in order to get the shutter speed and the aperture combination that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my ISO. I've got it set on the function button over here, if I can find it. So I'm going to raise my ISO. And if you look at the shutter speed icon, you can see that shutter speed is actually changing. Before I go any further, I'm just going to put my aperture back down to f3.5 and we're back on the 1125 shutter speed. And I'm then going to raise the ISO and you'll see that shutter speed gets faster. So we're now 1 2,000th of a second. So focus again, spin, take the picture. You can now see we've pretty much frozen the fan battery is slightly out of focus and the picture behind it is slightly out of focus. So as I was saying, if we want to get everything in focus, but still keep a reasonably fast shutter speed, we change the ISO. So I change the ISO. So I can now raise the aperture back up to F8. And you can now see we've got a 1 400th of a second shutter speed as opposed to what we had before when the ISO was down low. So focus, spin the fan, take the picture, you can now see we've pretty much frozen the fan. The diagram in the back is reasonably in focus and the battery is reasonably in focus. So we've got the situation that we wanted, everything in focus, but the fan still frozen. We can take that further again, as we did before, got to F22. We've now got 1 50th of a second shutter speed, which is quite slow, but it's nowhere near as it was before. So spin the fan, take the photograph, you can see we've still got quite a blurry fan because we are still on quite a slow shutter speed, but it's nowhere near as, as bad as it was before. You can still read the writing in the middle of the fan. You can see the battery quite clearly and you can see the diagram in the background. So I've got everything in focus and I've got a reasonably fast shutter speed by changing in the ISO. So just to quickly recap, if we want everything in focus or as much as possible in focus, but we also want to freeze motion we need to raise the ISO. If we want a really fast shutter speed to freeze motion, but we're not worried about everything being in focus, we can select a wide aperture of say f3.5, and that will give us a reasonably fast shutter speed of 1, 1, 2, 5 of a second. So by changing one, we have to change another one in order to get 
the picture that we want. You can change either the aperture to let in more light or less light. You can either change the shutter speed to freeze and introduce motion or you can change the ISO to give you the shutter speed and aperture combination that you want. I hope that was helpful guys. I know it's a very complicated subject to get your head around to start with. I've tried to explain it as best I can. I know this setup isn't brilliant. But if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments box below. And I always try and get back to everyone who asks me a question. And uh, I hope to help you out. So if that was helpful guys, please like, please subscribe. And I'll see you all on the next video. Cheers guys.